So in June, I read 10 books, July 13, August 9, September only six. But I have reasons. Well, one reason, one big chunky reason. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to my September book reviews. I'm going to share with you short reviews of the six books that I finished this September. It was a great reading month. In fact, my book of the month is probably my book of the year. Some of these others will probably be up for awards in my Red Fury book reviews. Book reviews. Red Fury book awards when I release that in January. So this is a really great month, even if I only read six books. So let's start with the first book that uh, that took most of the month, and this is the reason I only read six books this month. So this is the first volume of Shelby Foote's narrative on the American Civil War entitled Fort Sumter to Perryville. And this was a great read, but it's it's dense. I mean, you just open a page and you look and you see how dense the, the pages are. There's very narrow margins and spacing is kind of tight. And it's a very dense read. It was a very slow read. And this is the first of three volumes. And this is the smallest volume at about 850 pages. This took more than half of my month. And it was totally worth it. Despite it being a dense read, I found it very compelling, at times riveting. Shelby Foote was originally a novelist. And you can tell that here because he just seemed to know when to move the story to a different part of the the Civil War. When you're in the Virginia theater, just when I'd get bored with that, he would flash over to what was going on in the West, or he would flash down to the naval battles, or he'd tell you what was going on politically behind the scenes. And he moved around at a pretty good pace that was able to, I think, bring this story alive very, very well. I first discovered this author watching Ken Burns' masterful documentary, The Civil War, if you've seen that documentary, you know Shelby Foote. He's the Southern professor with the very slow Mississippi drawl and very slow delivery, but had the best anecdotes and the best stories in that documentary. And it comes to life here. He really brings this story to life. If you are a, a fan, a Civil War buff, or you like this era and you want to read something great from this era, about this era, this was written in the 1950s, I really recommend these Shelby Foote volumes, even if I've only read book one so far. I'll read volumes two and three in the next couple, couple years, but I really enjoyed this and I really enjoyed my time with it, even if it made my reading total a lot smaller this month. All right, let's go into crime fiction next and talk about Gone Baby Gone by Dennis Lehane. This was a reread for me. As most of you likely know, I'm rereading most of Lehane's works to put together a big video about him at the end of the year. And this is a reread and this is the fourth book of Lehane's and it's the fourth in the Kenzie and Gennaro series, Two Private Detectives from Boston. And this is one of Lehane's finest works. This is such a great crime thriller with a lot more thematic depth and just a lot of heft to this story. It's primarily about Kenzie Gennaro exploring a, a troubling case of a child abduction. So right away, you know, it's gonna be kind of a darker story than maybe just a, a typical crime fiction novel just because of the deeper and darker themes regarding a child abduction of the possibilities of what that could potentially mean. And that permeates the text. You just feel just a, a lot of heft to this and it really comes to a head in the third act. This is one of the best endings of any Lehane's books. The last third of this book is just superb as it goes a direction that you won't see coming. And just the way that the entire story wraps up, it's not what you would expect. The biggest thing I can take away from this and what I really enjoy about this and these Kenzie Gen Gennaro stories that I think elevates them above a lot of other crime fiction is you see the toll that it places upon these characters. Dealing with these dark moments and dealing with murderers and getting out of trouble and all of these different things that they've dealt with in all of these stories, it takes a toll on them personally. And so often in these books, you don't see that. You don't see that in a Jack Reacher book. Jack Reacher goes through hell in a book and the next book, it doesn't matter that anything happened. And in these books, you see the cumulative effect of what dealing with criminals and 
all of these crimes that they're investigating does to these two characters on a personal level. And it comes to a head in this one. This is a superb work of crime fiction. You could read it as a standalone, but read all the all of these by Lehane, the, the Kenzie Gennaro novels, because they're all really great. This would be a strong contender for Book of the Year. It ran up to against a juggernaut this month, but it's probably still up there in the conversation. Gone Baby Gone by Dennis Lehane. Highly recommended. Another work of crime fiction that I read on my Kindle was New York Minute by Stephen Aryan. I've heard it, I've heard his last name pronounced Orion as well. I don't know which is correct, so my apologies to the author if you see this. However you say his name, Orion, Aryan, wrote a really great novella called New York Minute, and it is a work of crime fiction with an interesting slant to it. So this author, I think, has only written fantasy and historical fiction before, and this is my first exposure to this author, but I've heard just high praise for a lot of his previous works. And New York Minute is a novella, and the author sent it to me early. This was an ARC, and it was released October 1st, and I read it prior to them. So thank you for to the author for sending it to me in exchange for this, this honest review. I really enjoyed it. He has a great ear for crime noir, which this is. It's a first-person narrative, a detective in New York investigating a crime. And you can tell that he understands the style of this this kind of novel very, very well right down to kind of the snappy type of dialogue that you expect in a story of this manner. But what I found most interesting is that this isn't our New York. This is an alternate New York. And the world building aspects, although very sparse, were some of my favorite aspects of this story. Because you see glimpses of, okay, this is New York and there are skyscrapers and tall buildings and things, but there's no technology, there's no electricity. So maybe it's post-apocalyptic, we really don't know. He doesn't enlighten us with that. He gives you glimpses that people rejected those kinds of things at some sort. So it's interesting that you're in New York City and you have this detective who's, in, who's investigating a crime for a mob boss and he's not walking around with a revolver, he's got a sword and a dagger <laughs> and there's crossbows and things like that. So I thought it was just a really interesting juxtaposition of these kind of two different ideas, and it really made it feel very unique. And for someone who reads, reads crime fiction quite a bit, I enjoy the uniqueness of it. I thought it was very inventive and very intriguing, and it makes me definitely want to pick up the next two novellas that he has planned in this series. My only complaint with this book is at the very end, there's a really brilliant plot turn that I didn't see coming, and I thought was very well done and had some deeper thoughts behind it. And then he had one more plot turn after that that I think was just one plot turn too many that it kind of cheapened the big reveal and the, the big plot turn. But overall, I think this was a great read. It's a quick read. I read it in one sitting in like two hours. So if you're interested in kind of a fast-paced work of noir in a very interesting alternate New York City, I highly recommend picking up New York Minute by Stephen Aryan. All right, this is going to be a shorter video than usual because the next two books, I just shot a dual review for these two that are going to come out next week. So I'll be talking about both of these books quite a bit next week. So I'm just going to be very brief with the next two in the fantasy genre. The first is The Bloodstones by Tori Tekken, and this is a self-published work. Tori Tekken is Tori Talks, who's been on the channel before. I consider her a friend. So I was nervous going in <laughs> that this would be good and... I had no reason to be nervous because it's very good. I could tell in the first chapter, I really love her writing style. She has a great command of the English language. There's a richness to her style that I enjoyed, and it really lends a lot of credibility to the world building that I was just able to understand, and it made it feel real because she just so eloquently described things. There's a lot of great things in this story that I enjoy. There's a lot of traditional fantasy elements done in a more modern way. Like you get a coming of age story, with a very different kind of slant to it. You get a different kind of found family. You get multi-POV that is structured like traditional fantasy where it starts with one character for a while and then branches out. You get a great convergence at the end and you get a satisfying ending to this one, even though it's the first book in a book series. But this is a really great book. I'm gonna talk about it more next week on that dual review and I hope that you'll watch that dual review with this one and the next book that I'm gonna talk about because I think a lot of you would really, really enjoy The Bloodstones by Tori Tekken as much as I did. 
So the other book that's going to be part of that dual review is Shadow of a Dark Queen by Raymond E. Feist. This is also the first book in a book series. The book series is The Serpent War Saga. And this is part of the overall Rift War cycle. This is the fourth series that I'm reading in that cycle. There are different reading orders, but the one I've chosen, I've read this fourth. And it has a lot of the things that I just talked about with Tori Tekken's book. It has a great coming-of-age tale. Also done a little bit differently because we kind of have a bit of an older protagonist to be going on a coming-of-age story. We get a great found family. We get a lot of the traditional fantasy elements, some great world building, some great action sequences, and a, a great start to a book series. And the one thing I always appreciate about Feist, Feist is so good about making sure he still writes a great book, not just a great installment in a book series. I think we see that a lot of times in a book series where books don't come to a satisfying end. They don't have to come to the end of a series, but they need to come to some some kind of satisfactory ending. And I think Feist does that very well in this book, and he does that in all of his books. He doesn't forget that an individual book is still an individual book. So that in many ways, you could read this and stop, and you wouldn't need to read the rest of the series. So I really enjoyed Shadow of a Dark Queen. It has me very excited to read this series. It's, it's uh, off to a fantastic start. As I'm filming this, I'll probably be starting the second book sometime next week. But uh, Shadow of a Dark Queen, another great one. Again, if you want to hear me talk more about this, as well as the parallels and the contrasts with the Bloodstones, check out that dual review, which I'll be releasing next week. My book of the month was Lord of Emperors by Guy Gabriel K. This is probably not a surprise for any of you that follow the channel. I recently released a video called Why You Should Read the Serentine Mosaic. This is the second book in that duology, and it was everything I had hoped and more. I wept at the end of this one. It was such a beautiful, beautiful conclusion to that story. The Serentine Mosaic is kind of historical fantasy. The way I'm going to say it from now on is it's historical fiction in a fantasy world, because that's kind of how it's written, as it's written from a historical perspective, and you get to see what happens, glimpses of the future is whoever the storyteller is tells you the, the events here. But the Serentine Mosaic itself is, it's a mosaic of an entire empire. And you get to see all the little stories. The story is primarily from the perspective of an artisan. But we do see an emperor, an empress. We get to see generals. We get to see common foot soldiers. We get to see cooks, assistant cooks, slaves, dancers, chariot racers. It's just a huge depiction and one of the finest depictions of an empire that I've ever I've ever experienced. Kay is one of the best in this genre, if not the best. His storytelling is as good as anybody and his writing style is as good as anybody. I've already talked about this one at length, so we're cutting this video a little shorter today, but Lord of Emperors by Guy Gabriel Kay is my first or second favorite of the eight Guy Gabriel Kay books that I've read. I loved it. It's my book of the month, strong contender for book of the year, but my book of the month, September 2024. So, hey, this was a record for me. This is a short wrap up because only six books and three of the books I've either already talked about or we'll talk about next week. So definitely come check out that dual review if you are interested in either of those two books. Hey, if you've read any of these books, let me know in the comment section below. I'd also love to hear what your best book was in September. Did you read a great one like I did? Let me know. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. You can also find me on Twitter, Goodreads, and the Fireside Discord. I'd love to interact with you there. As always, thank you for watching. Till next time, goodbye.